I didn't have an academic upbringing, so for me, I was very happy to leave school, go to college, learn to do my typing shorthand and the things that we did then, um, and, and get a job. And I wanted to go to work and earn money. I wanted to go to earn money and then I wanted to get married. And, and that was, that's what I aspired to. O only now, of course, in later years, you look and you reflect back, yes, it would have been much, I would be much happier, I'm sure, had I have gone into further education. Life's easier if you've got more behind you. Ideally, I would have got a degree and I would have done my own, got a degree and just got all that out of the way. Um, because life's easier with a degree in this country, I think, job-wise and even just to say, even if you don't do anything with your degree, just to say you've got a degree, it's like looking good. It's people respect you more or they think that you're intelligent? They didn't really direct you in any way at all. I mean, it was just like, all right, you, after co um, school, you're going to go to college. Um, by now, you should have known what you want to do, and that's it. So it's like, when you don't know what you want to do, when you actually go to the opening evenings of colleges, I mean, to be honest with you, I think the reason why everyone does um, childcare, especially women, is because it's just thrown at you. It's so easy. I mean, they target you and the way they sell it to you is, it seems like it's such an easy course. And I think that's what it is. And obviously they, they know that men aren't going to want to do child. I mean, there's maybe a handful of men that are going to want to do childcare. But I mean, women, they're just easily pushed. And when you come out of school, you're still very young, naive. Not everyone knows what they want to do. There are a few girls that have got a strong head, maybe from a strong background, like their mum's a doctor and their dad's a, I don't know, a solicitor. Um, they might be stirred in the right direction, but generally, coming from a normal working background, it's like you don't always know what you want to do. And I mean, that's just the first thing that's handed to you if you don't want to do A levels. It's like, oh, why don't you do childcare or health and social care or, you know, because it's just such an easy course. Yeah, there wasn't even one boy on the whole course, not even one. So, I mean, that just shows you. When I went to enrol, beauty therapy, art and design, things like that. No, like, oh, why didn't you do this? Or carpentry or something like that. Why didn't you try it, see if you like it? I'd probably really enjoy it if I did. But I don't think there's, you know, an education or enough publicity going out there to women to say, like, oh, you can be up there and you can earn a lot more. Why don't you just try this and do this? And rather than, you know, like, I think it's because there's a shortage of jobs that a lot of people, well, they're trying to go to uni, but... They need to just get have a job in the meantime, and that's salon jobs are just easy to come by, you know. When you're at uni, it's like you don't obviously you get educated in the subject, but you also get educated in life in general. You know, it's such a it's a, such a transformation. It's funny actually because you don't really see it when people come out of uni and they've changed. It's like, well, you notice they've changed, but you don't see how they've changed because it's like going uni, coming back, you're just studying. But it actually does change the way you think. I think it's like the conversations that you have with people around you. You see your tutor and like she's this strong lady, like with a strong personality. And it's like it changes your mind, your view, your perspective on as a woman in general. It's like I want to be my tutor. But that's when independence kicked in and I was like, right, yeah, this is something good. I like this feeling.
I was at home, I didn't work. As soon as we got married, I stopped working. And then I, I had children. So that was the, the share, how the work was shared then. He went to work and I did everything at home and the shopping and bringing up the children, taking them to school um, and cooking a meal for him in the evening. That was the, that's what we did 35 years ago. Even when I was working part time, I was still waking up and doing everything. Why do you do that? Because I can't bear, I can't bear, I, I don't like anything, I don't like it not being done, if that makes any sense. My husband's always helped. And now as the children have got older, I must say that they do a lot of helping. I can see that my son and son-in-laws help their wives. It's, from that point of view, um, it's completely different, really, to when I first got married, where I was doing everything, and my first husband was working, um, and I was doing everything at home. Because I don't like having to, like, say, OK, Mum, here's my kids, look after them while I go off to work. You know, I did try. I did try to stay at the BBC, but... You know, when my older daughter came along, I couldn't. We didn't put this into words, but we both realised it doesn't matter who actually. It doesn't matter, as long as one parent is at home. Um, does it make a difference if it's a man or a woman? To both of us, no, it didn't. It just, that just does not exist at all. It's not sharing. It, yeah, it's a nice idea, but it's like, it's like... We're having a baby. Well, yeah, yeah, you're kind of, sorry, guys are along for the ride, but, and, and to fill in, but the actuality is that physically, all the drain, mentally, emotionally, first and foremost, is 80% women, 20% guys, so, and that follows through when they come along, because if, I mean, I'm blessed that I'm able to be at home, but the tra it's still quite a trade-off, and it's a huge adjustment. People I know who look after their children are all grandparents. Most grandparents want to be with their grandchildren, actually. They're quite happy to be with them. It's, you know, you, the love... No, no, Betsy, let Nana do it. The love you have for a grandchild is different to the love you have for your own child. It's a different love. You adore them. My mum looked after him initially, and then when she passed away, then I got him into the nursery. So I had to wait a couple of months for a place, and... He was about one and a half or something. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have people who are close to you to give you support, that's cool. But it's not really like that anymore. Sort of last seven years, when we first made this year, I carry on full time and he go part time. My career from there to where I'm now, I have really progressed. And I'm really grateful for the type of man I have in my life. For me, something that's equal would be, OK, he works full-time, I'll work maybe part-time. Obviously, I'm looking after the kids, I'm bringing up the kids. It's just natural for my mother to do that. Um, but at the same time, when he comes home, he can cook. You know, I wouldn't just be cooking all the time. For once you're married and you then fall pregnant, it's a done deal. It's like when you get on a roller coaster and they buckle you in and you start shunting off. That's it. And you don't... There's nowhere else to go. You have to keep going forward, whether you like it or not. And I just suddenly thought, oh, my God, I don't get a choice now. Everything that I want to do is, is not going to be second to the child. I'm going to be, like, fourth or fifth, because it will be the child, and then it will be keeping the house running, because, again, for, either for the child or for my husband, and then it will be, it is your husband kind of thing, because if he's going to work and I'm at home... He needs to be in a state that he can work. So you, you start to go further and further down the line. I do want to give 100% to my children, but I don't want to be a full-time housewife, which doesn't mean that I'm going to be at the house all the time. Do you see what I mean? So it's like I can still be in the house, like, doing my thing, like, working or doing whatever I'm doing. But it's like um, I could pay someone just to look after them, to, like, you know, play with them. But in terms of like bringing them up and you know, you know how some people have an au pair or a nanny like for them all the time. I wouldn't want to do something like that because I just feel like you miss out on so much.
If finances are easier, then um, it's, it's easier to be equal as well. I don't think any, any woman should um, have to rely on a man to look after her. I think that's really wrong. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like begging, but, you know, if you want to go and get, a, you know, like, new pair of shoes, you should be so, oh, well, and then you go, though, well, do you really need them? You know, when are you going to wear them? How much are they? What can you wear for this? What do you need that for? The whole idea is to go and get it yourself. I don't even think it works if you earn the same as them. If I earn a hell of a lot more than him, then you have that shift. Because automatically, it's because it's nothing to do with what you do. I think it's to do with how much you earn. Because it's power, isn't it? It's, money is power. So if I'm earning more, then I would need to stay in my job. If I was to be a kept woman, it would be like, look, you put whatever in my account, don't tell me how to spend it. You put that in my account every single month. That's the end of it. I don't mind running the home, doing the cleaning, doing the washing, but you put a decent amount of money in my account and do not question how I spend it. That's the only way I could ever be a stay-at-home woman. So I want to buy a house first, like my own house, and then maybe buy one with him later on. But I'd like to buy one first, just for myself. I've relied on him a lot, you know, for money and everything. And uh, he doesn't look down on me for that or anything like that. He doesn't try and, you know, boss me around or anything. He's quite supportive, actually, which is really, really good, which I love. Because if it wasn't for him, then I probably, you know, I wouldn't have any money for the past year. Stability, isn't it? It's, it's nice to have something of your own. I mean, it's nice to build something with your husband as well, but it's always that much nicer just, just to have that thing in the back of your mind that I have got something of my own. And I'm not really bothered at how much I earn, just as long as I can contribute enough to, to buy things for myself. And, well, if I had a kid, which I don't, but I, I want to know that I can provide for my child. You have to have your own backbone, your own sort of strength. I just think that like, marriages break down so often these days. It's just like you've, you have to have something of your own. It's important. We put makeup on. We didn't go to and uh, to work looking a mess. I don't know if, if that's how people do when they go to work now, but we didn't. We had to, we had to look nice. Like I wouldn't go to work without makeup on, partly because I work with a bunch of guys and I'd guy. If you walked into like a bunch of girls, they probably wouldn't say much. But if you went into like a room full of guys and you looked a real mess, it'd be like, you know, what have you been doing last night? Were you exhausted or something? And they'd just think you looked a mess. But and they'd probably voice it. I know people that get up in the morning, um put their makeup on straight away and their boyfriend's still asleep because they want to look nice for when he wakes up. Now, I'm not like that, but I know a lot of people that are. I'm very homely and motherly. When I have a boyfriend, I'm um, fanatic about keeping it amazing. And, and I, I do actually play that ridiculous role of being like the cute sort of housewife and I always like it to be immaculate when they come home. And, I love cooking for people, and, and I, I, my girlfriends always say I do too much for my boyfriends. Like, even before I'm even moving in with them, I'm helping them to clean up and tidy and everything. Oh, I've got a delivery. I bought some shoes. It's my shopping addiction. <laughs> You're looking good. It makes you feel good about yourself. You feel a bit more powerful um, than when you... If you come out the door looking fabulous, or you think you look fabulous, you walk with your head a bit higher than you do when you've got no makeup on, hair's not done, crap clothes. It's just a psychological thing, isn't it? And when you feel psychologically confident, you feel that you can achieve more, definitely. We're in a society now where it's all about being image conscious and weight conscious, and you have so many young girls that are just, you know, really, really weight conscious because of, you know, the publicity and the media and everything. And I read the papers, and I see women in the papers and I just think, like, what happened to you, you know? I did Botox for the first time ever in my life about two weeks ago. And I'd never done it before and I just thought, well, I've never had anyone say I'm looking aged and old. But I could see it. I hated it. I had, like, crow's feet and had, like, these huge 
wrinkles here. When I looked down, I had these big frown lines here, and I hated looking at them. Because I have my Botox down regularly, it probably doesn't really go back that much. But you know, as soon as like as three months is up, I say to me, "Well." And it's actually one little line, but it just makes you feel better. Good looking women do often get more opportunities, given put their way, or um, at least try, you know, push more for it, especially. Five years from now, it's like, oh, I'll graduate at 25, which gives me five years to move up the ladder. I mean, in that five years, I'm going to have to be doing some rough tactics to get up the ladder. So, I mean, I, mean, I do want to, I would like to be in a good career, a stable career. Um, within a stable job and a good income coming in within five years. 35, I think I should be on a, a nice wage. It changed somewhat when we had a female Prime Minister, but then the society was slightly more aggressive anyway. So then having a female position almost allowed women to be perceived as more aggressive, which was quite a nice thing, but I don't understand why we can't be who we are without being having male traits why women can't just be allowed to get ahead and do what they need to do without becoming men to do it the career that i want to go into like the job that i want to go to is very male orientated like it's dominated by male so i mean you got to be a really tough woman to get in there and to get up because obviously men you being a man you would know that is you know they're very um i don't know they're very they don't look down on women, but it's like, oh, I can do it better than you. Early 90s, women in the business suit with all those big shoulder pads, you know, I'm as good as a man. And what I'm trying to say, now we are, we don't need to say that I am as good as a man because of my big high shoulder pads. Without my shoulder pads, I'm still equally as good as anybody else can be. I'm different, but I'm equally as good. So we have come to that equality. I definitely see it. I see it in all workplaces. I mean, like when I was working for financial companies, even there, it's like the men, there's only one or two women that actually get that respect from men. And they're very hard women. They're like tough women. I still think that, I still think at the end of the day it comes down to the men working and the women staying at home. I still think so myself. I mean obviously, you know, it's not, but then it is. Do you know what I mean? It is. I mean, it just, it's just all about the woman, you know, I mean you go here, I mean you, when you come out with me you'll see all the women with their kids. You won't see a group, you won't see a group, a table full of men with their kids having uh, cappuccinos. You don't see it, do you know what I mean? You just don't see it. You know, you go out during the day, you'll see the woman and the child. You don't see, you know, people can go on about equality and equality, but when it comes down to it, the proof's in the pudding. You know, you do, you do see the women with the children. It's about the opportunities, about rights of a person, it's about enabling the woman to use their intellectual side enabling them to fulfil their potential, um, is that that's also part of equality. And in, in many countries, I'm aware of that, something is not practised. When you read about it in the papers, on the big, I don't actually understand what people mean by equality. You, when you have children, it's never going to be equal in that sense. Does it mean equality that you, you get to choose who stays at home and who goes to work once the children come? No, you don't really, because there are the myriad of variables that you have to take into account, and everybody's different. So, is it equal? No, it's not. It's not a kind of equality we will sit down and talk about and say equality means this or that. This is just equality within the house. Is just the respecting other person's choices. And the fact that um, one is male or female, it just did not exist in that conversation. Um, and over the years it's proven he is as good doing things in the house, especially with the children. He's as good mother as I can be. Sometimes I think he's a better mother than myself. <laughs> I think you shouldn't be made feel like you should, 
you should have it. It's, you, we're not brought up that way, the way that we see our mothers in the home, the way that we see our fathers in the home. We don't see that. That's not the ideal that we're fed by the media. It's not what we read. It's fairy stories. It's just not there. So why are we now saying that we should have something that ultimately doesn't exist? Who, who has that? Women are climbing the ladders. They're making successful careers for themselves. They're earning more than men in some cases. There's more stay-at-home dads and more women are going back to work after having children and managing having, you know, families, a good career, etc. So it's, defin it's definitely improving, but we're not quite there yet. There'll always be a difference between men and women. That's why I think God's made men the way they are and women the way they are. I think there's always going to be a difference. I mean, even like in workplaces, in the way they think, the way they eat, there's always going to be a difference. I mean, their strengths, their weaknesses. A man can be like maybe physically stronger, whereas a woman can be mentally stronger. Like he not be he might not be able to cope with, you know, being able to run a house, whereas a woman would be able to do that, but she might not be physically stronger to actually work all the hours that a man can work. So I mean, yeah, there's always going to be there's always going to be a difference between men and women. It's just the way they're made. It's a very fulfilling word. It's, it's what this society has made is the woman who fought many, not the battles, but the struggles, the right to vote, the right to be uh, taken equally. It's the woman of this country uh, over the last few centuries. They struggled so much. They struggled for everybody. And even women for myself, like me, in benefiting from the struggles they've gone through. But this journey is not over. We have to struggle to have a better society for next generations.